A couple more examples and then we'll be done. Uh, so this is Lloyd versus Whitworth. This is from 1929. Uh, Her Harold Lloyd had written, um, I mean, uh, Whitworth had written a story and it was, a, I believe, a magazine story about um, a football player uh, and a nerd, a nerd turned football player who um, helped this football team win and he won the adoration of you know, uh, of his peers and a girl and all, all that, all that stuff. Uh, this became the idea for Harold Whitworth's 1925 film called The Freshman about a nerd who joins the football team, helps it ultimately win and wins the adoration of, of the people in the town and a girl. Uh, Lloyd uh, is sued by Whitworth because he claims that it's a derivative that, you know, uh, Lloyd's story about a nerd who joins a football team um, and ultimately learns a little bit about himself, but, uh, you know, wins the adoration of the town and uh, the girl, um, thought it was derivative of his, his story. Um, but, you know, after some this, uh, appeals and all this stuff, the court ruled in favor of, of, of Harold Lloyd, basically saying that Whitworth's story was an idea. Anybody could make a movie about a nerd who joins a football team and, you know, out of nowhere, you know, wins, helps them win the big game and, and wins the adoration of the town and the girl. This sounds kind of like, you know, a stuck-up, snobby African prince who comes to the United States to find love happiness and learn a little bit about himself, right? Can you copyright that? Hell no. It's just, it's just an idea. And that's what the court ruled. They basically said that you cannot protect uh, general plot ideas or plot structures uh, in films like, like uh, The Freshman um, or Coming to America. Um, the interesting thing, um, too, is it also helped to protect uh, the industry against accusations of, plagi of plagiarism. Um, so it gave people in the film industry the ability to say, yeah, I made a movie about a nerd who gets on the football team and ultimately helps the football team win and in, in, the, in the process win the adoration of the town and a girl. Um, and yeah, like you wrote a story about that or you made a movie about it or you wrote a song about it. This is not infringing on that. Okay, um, that's kind of like what that did. It gave the industry a bit, a bit of an ability to protect themselves about using ideas. Okay, um, the interesting thing is, if you recognize this, this is uh, the Water Boy. Um, when this came out, uh, the makers of the film were sued by uh, Harold Lloyd's granddaughter because she she holds the the copyright, which is now you know, she owes a copyright to the freshman, um, and she sued. Now, out of anybody that should know, <laughs> know that making a movie starring Adam Sandler, who's a nerd outcast who, uh, you know, gets on the football team, ultimately helps him win, and in the process wins the adoration and love of the town and a girl, is just an idea, and you cannot copyright that. And so that, that lawsuit <clears throat> got thrown out. Uh, there's a thing in films called scenes of fair, and that's a French thing. Fair means to do um, in, in French. And this is basically a legal concept that's used, um, you know, when any uh, filmmaker takes another filmmaker to court, which, which says this, that you cannot, uh, you cannot copyright ideas, um, just the expression ideas. And this tries to separate what's the difference between genre elements, the, the basics of genres, um, and actual expressions, plot details, uh, lines of dialogue, uh, bits and pieces in a storyline. And so um, if we have an example of this, a young couple walking in the rain and are seeking refuge, and they find it in a church, and they get into the church, and they find a blanket, and they warm themselves. And that's in a film, okay? There's another film that comes out 
And there's a sequence where a young couple is walking in the rain, they seek refuge, they find it in a church, they find a blanket, and they warm themselves. Is that copyright infringement? The answer is hell no. Because of this, this doctrine basically says if you put people in similar situations, would they do the same thing? If you're walking with your partner in the cold rain and the only building you can seek refuge in is a church and there's a blanket that can warm you, would you do it? And the answer is yes. But all of the elements of dialogue, the bits and pieces along the way, the real intricate expressions of those ideas, those are copyrightable, right? But the idea that, oh, it's raining out, let's go get in from the rain and warm up with a blanket, you know, anybody would do that, okay? So um, this is how like courts will sort of determine the difference between what is copyright infringement or what is just the, an idea. So what's an expression of an idea and what's an, an idea? And an idea is, you know, the general idea would people in the same situation do the same thing. That's not protectable, but what they say and specifically do along the way is protectable. A little bit about characters in films, okay? So we know that character names um, and other elements of characters can be trademarked. We, we've seen that, we understand that, okay? Um, the interesting thing is that, so like, you cannot technically, so you can trademark the name Luke Skywalker, but you cannot copyright Luke Skywalker, except for this. Um, is Luke Skywalker an expression of an idea, or is Luke Skywalker just a character? That is, is could the Star Wars story exist without Luke Skywalker? You can trademark the name and franchise the name, but the, you know, basically what's happened is if the character, Luke Skywalker, trademark, and the story of Luke Skywalker, right, are so important that they're one and the same, they're so inextricably entwined together, then that trademark, that, that name, right, becomes an expression. Okay, it becomes copyrightable. So characters who are super integral to a film or a storyline, not only can their names be trademarked, they can also be considered copyrightable. Okay, and this is very, very, very important. So um, basically every character in the Star Wars universe is trademarked, everything. George Lucas trademarked everything, but the important thing is not all those characters are vital to the storyline. Yoda, incredibly vital to the storyline. He is copyrightable as just a name. That means like if someone were to make a Star Wars offshoot book or whatever, um, they couldn't include Yoda in it at all. That would be copyright infringement and trademark infringement. Jawas. You could probably get, do, do a little, little Jawa one or a Sand People one or whatever, right? Because they're not super integral to the plot, the plot line of, of, of the film, okay? Um, it, but you can always, always, these, these, these characters that have merged essentially into an expression, like it's not just a trademarkable name, but they're now an expression of an idea. They're so vital to that expression. Um, you know, you can still parody them. You can still make fun of them. There's plenty of Star Wars parodies out there, plenty of parodies out there. Um, but you have to just use enough. You ca it cannot be an adequate replacement or con confuse consumers. So here's some examples of characters who've become expressions. Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th, right? There's no Friday the 13th without Jason Voorhees. Uh, Pennywise in the It uh, movies and books. Uh, Freddy Krueger, um, you know, Friday, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, right? Um, Luke and Darth, Princess Leia, Han Solo, Yoda, all these characters that Disney is now making movies about, you know, like I said, it's going to be sand people next, um, right? Uh, you know, those are just some, just some examples of characters who have become expressions. That's, that's basically what I want you to know about film and copyright, documentary films and copyright. Um, I hope it's been a little bit informative, specifically for anybody that makes films out there or enjoys films at all. Um, which you're probably doing a lot of, probably getting way too much damn screen time, um, probably not, not, not a lot of Netflix, Hulu time um, for enjoyment. But anyways, 
I hope you all are well. Take care of yourselves. You are halfway through week seven. We are almost done with this dang thing that we call remote learning, online learning, all that stuff. But I hope you're having a good time. I'm having a pretty decent time talking to my camera, but I wish y'all were right here in the barn with me, um, you know, talking and chatting, all that stuff. But uh, I'll catch you on the flip. Take care of y'all. Peace.